Trigger warning. The following episode contains mentions of depression, trauma, self-harm, the words racism, hate crimes, and other mental health conditional topics. If you are sensitive towards those topics, I'd advise you to skip this episode at this point. Thank you. G'day everyone, it's your host Skyla on the mic. Welcome to Deep Thinkers Corner, a series where you and I talk about all of the possible stuff you and I might think of as interesting. Of course, combined with nerdy stuff like manga, anime, music and even poetry. I want to start with a poem by Rippy Kara. I hope I did not butcher the name. If so, I'm really sorry. Um, Yesterday, when I woke up, the sun fell to the ground and rolled away. Flowers beheaded themselves. All that's left alive here is me, and I barely feel like living. Depression is a shadow living inside me. If you've gotten the hint already, it's about the topic of this episode. Today, I want to think deeply about an urgent and I think still rather unspoken topic, which is mental health, or better said, living with mental health conditions. Um, on this note, I will also mention a bit about my own experience, my own personal feelings about it. However, this is not, this does not mean that you guys have to agree with me. Also, I'm not going to bore you with scientifics and statistics because I'm personally not really a fan of that myself. <clears throat> so just recently I watched a Let's Play, but also going to play the game myself. Oops, I'm sorry. It's called Missing Messages, created by Angelia. Angela He. I hope I did not butcher your last name. It is a wonderful game and I love their art style. It is really unique and I, I just love it, okay? The topic made me think. Like, when I watched that Let's Play, um, I was like, oh. I mean, like, generally, think and to be honest, I could relate to one of the characters. <clears throat> Being a person who deals with mental health conditions herself, it's quite difficult sometimes. I mean, I'm lucky. And I got low better. It's not that I'm healed. No. But but I got better. I got really better. But also from my personal surroundings, I also know how it is when you don't get better. And the only exit you might have is well, death. Um this is just another reason why it's important to me to talk with you guys about it. Um because yeah. Where it has it's it's still something which happens quite often. Anyways, the game shows very well that opening up to what someone can help, and it doesn't have to be a therapist as your first station. Like, uh, I mean, like because um, it might take a while to find a good one and especially suitable for yourself. From personal experience, I know it is hard to actually open up first to anyone talking about how you feel, like, especially since you're not really able to put your ver put words together to actually express how you feel. You can try to describe it, but it's not, not exactly what you feel, right? Or actually, like, the lack of knowing how to express yourself. As I said, it's, it's, it's just... You don't know how to say that. And there is also the fear of a re rejection. It is there. And I'm not going to lie to you when I say I was rejected. I I tried to come over the fear of being rejected, but I was actually rejected. And that by my own family members. Um, that was at least when I tried to confirm them the first time. Because I did not know... Like, I was a minor back then, okay? And I did not know a therapist in my surroundings. And I needed to get there somehow because uh, we used to live outside of the village. And let's say it is a, a bit far stretched, okay? So, and I was not sure if you did not actually need the, like, um, I mean, on the one hand, I would have loved the support, but also, um, 
if your parents need to allow you to go there. I mean, it might sound silly, right? But as a minor, and especially living in Germany, it is a little weird sometimes when it comes to doctors, therapists and stuff. Because I did not know that to that time, okay? I was just... I just wanted help. Because I did not know how to deal with myself. But yeah, it did not go well. As I said, I was rejected. Some might think or ask, why did you not go to one yourself? As I said right now, it's complicated. Um, and I was actually very scared. I was scared of, of diagnosis and taking medication. Because I'm not a fan of that. And I still get super anxious before an appointment, even by a regular doctor. Um, because I overthink. I overthink a lot and <laughs> uh, I think about worse things and most of the times I just don't have anything. Like when it comes like to the normal stuff like having a flu or something. That's just that. So okay. But on this note, I, I was on a really, really dark place. And I've also done stuff. I thought about stuff which was not good. But how did I get over this? So this is just really personal speaking. I try not to go too deep into it because it's low-key private, but I'm actually very open about it. Um, I have a younger sister. Like, she is legit really much younger than me. Um, I think 13 years difference or 14 years actually. And... I thought about how much it must pay in my family if I was gone. Like, especially to my younger sister. Um, and it terrified me. It terrified me a lot. Like, because I can think of this in a real realistic scenario, which is sometimes good for writing. But if you think about such stuff, it is actually scary on how graphic you can get or how tight so yeah and because I was so scared and I'm so sorry if I tear up a little it's still getting me um, I somehow decided to become a person for my sister I might have needed when I was younger like a supportive and very open person who who you can went to rant about stuff I mean, I used to be always like the kind of mom type of friend. <laughs> Loki still, yeah. But I also wanted to become a better person personally for myself. I wanted to, yeah, not be this dark anymore. I mean, it's hard. It is hard. I, I still deal with dark thoughts from time to time, but it's not as regular as it used to be. So, this is what I can say. Um, but I don't want to be an idolized person because I'm a true human. I, I want to be a true human being, being true about my emotions and everything, you know? Even if I lack the words of expressing myself. So, I found comfort in music and soon in writing. I mean, I used to write before that but I dropped that hobby quite a while and I picked it up again I was like okay try to write something down and then I started to write actually poetry yeah and stuff I wrote diary I just continued to write I wrote everything down that was on my mind yeah and I also found comfort in reading um, and don't get me wrong, <laughs> it is just great to know that you're not alone. That, that even if it's fictional, it is still supportive. It was more support when what you might have had as a person. And if you find comfort in music, poetry, reading and stuff, this is, this is actually good because it, it just, yeah, it can be really mind blowing. And at this point, I also want to tell you guys, you are not alone. You are not alone suffering. You are not. Actually, there are more people suffering under depression than 
or any mental health conditions than you might expect, but you're not alone. It just might take a while to find those people. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And also, I know that not everyone has a younger sibling. <laughs> And don't get me wrong, my sister and I do half is sometimes I really don't want to be around you relationship, like this typical sibling relationship. But then I would never tell her that I would not like her because I do like her. I I, I am I'm quite protective actually over her. <laughs> so if anybody hurts my little sister, I'm sorry. Don't. <laughs> Just don't. Don't come after her. She's a little precious being. And I know she can be a handful, but I mean it in a good way. I love her. She's she's a really wonderful little child and <sighs> I know that she wishes that I was more home and played maybe a little bit more with her from time to time, but actually it is like we have this like this this age gap which makes me really tired of playing with dolls or sometimes just games. And sometimes I'm just really not in the mood for that. So I'm sorry, baby sister. Oh, I'm studying here at the university. I'm sorry that I can't get, get home that often. I'm really sorry. But by now we actually call more often. Oh god, I'm, okay. I'm getting teary. Yeah, we call. We have like little phone calls from time to time by now because she got a phone. <laughs> Her first phone. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and even if we don't have much to talk about, it's just nice to be on the phone with her because it's just like, you, you, you're there. And even though she's so much younger, she's quite open and I really love that. Like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Uh. I really like my family, even though we had hard times because we just misunderstood each other a lot. By now, I would say we have a better bonding, like not bo like a better bond and connection. Uh, also, um, as I said before, um, there is a mention of self harm. Um, Let's say like this, I stopped doing things which didn't benefit myself big, many, many years ago because I made a promise to the boyfriend I had to that time. And on a personal level, I am someone who takes promises very seriously. I don't like to break them because it breaks my heart. <laughs> and this is why I rarely make them. But yeah, so I stopped doing shit. I mean, I still have my scars. They are really really pale and you can't really see it because I'm a pretty pale snowflake I'm sorry <laughs> but I still can't see them and I'm just like girl why did you do that why did you do that to yourself but on the other hand I I understand what I try to do with that it's just not an excuse to do that so guys try not or stop Doing things which just don't benefit yourself, which hurt yourself. Because even if it's just for a moment of relief, it, it is not a constant. It's not a constant solution. It doesn't make you happy on a long time. And <sighs> yeah, I just wanted to mention that because I know that. Because I know that. And it's because I know that too much. I know that too a lot. I, I I also know how it feels like for people who have um, like people they they see them hurting and they don't know how to help them. I I had that too. I had. Let's say I. I just just try not to do it okay so yeah again I'm just was open about it because I feel like we're far too quiet about it as I said to the beginning mental health conditions like living with that it's it's 
getting put under the rug so easily. Like, of course, we have a mental health awareness day, but it's just a day. And actually, we should. <laughs> there are so many topics. We should be aware more than just on a singular day in a year. We should, like, there are so many things. We should put more emphasis on. Um, like mental health um, and our t- non-binary transgender and queer people in general like it's just, just so heartbreaking it's so heartbreaking that we have to fight for rights yeah, I say we because I'm not straight myself, okay? But I am also I am also if I was straight, I would still be an ally. So I, I understand that it's just I just I'm sorry for rambling, but it is just like there is so much wrong going on in this world. Like why can't you just give people their rights? Like for queer people, try to understand them, it's not a sickness. It is not. Love is love. About mental health conditions, I understand that a therapist and psychiatrist is most often a private thing and that they get their money with that. But why is it so expensive? Why does therapy have to be this expensive? Like, I mean, there's so much wrong, and I could rant about it for much longer, but I'm not going to do it. So, again, I'm just open about this because I really feel like we're too quiet about it, and being open and aware of myself and mental health conditions also helps me personally to deal with myself, also to about general topics it just helps me to deal with myself and maybe also how I want to um, or how I should deal with my environment and I'm sorry guys I really don't have a recipe how to get better I really don't as I said I find I found and I still find comfort in reading Music especially. Music music is a big part of me. And writing. Um, to me personally, it is like you have to make that decision. You have to make it for yourself. And I do not just mean like saying, yes, I want to get better. But you really need to feel it within your entire body. It must come from the very depths of your heart. Because otherwise, you can try to get better, but you would might fall back to it. Just speaking of personal experience a little bit. And you literally need to pick your, as many straws as possible. If someone reaches a hand to you, or even a finger, try to grab it. But try not... When you're having someone... You can talk to and rant about it. Also understand if they say, okay, maybe stop at this moment. Because again, it, since you feel a lot, you put also a lot on others. And yeah, you're not a burden, but people can feel overwhelmed about how much you can feel. And sometimes they also struggle with their own stuff. Maybe they also struggle with some other conditions. Which are far beyond our knowledge. And so it's always a give and take. Do the talking, but also do the listening. This is an advice I always want to give for any type of relationship. 
be it friendship, romantic relationships, family. Mm, what else? I mean, okay, that friendship between your dog and yourself is a little hard, but your dog will give you signs if they need some space. Give them a little bit of space as well. Yeah, but as we're as we've been talking about music, um, we are artists who speak about mental health in their songs. For example, I quite find like for me personally, I also listen to K-pop and that eight member group, Stray Kids, for example. They helped me a lot to get out of this dark pit. Also, BTS. I'm going to mention, but for me personally, Stray Kids pulled me really out of there. I mean, I understood, like, I tr started to understand myself with BTS through their songs, like Para, which means um, C in Korean. But I was really relating to Elevator from Stray Kids. Also, Mia, um, Missing in Action. For the ones who don't know, maybe the abbreviation. Uh, and I, I can just, um, yeah, suggest them if you want to give them a listen. And do not worry, there are English translated lyrics on the internet. So if you don't understand for Korean, there's still some translations out there. They might be a little bit incorrect at some points because sometimes the wording is a little bit off but they still give you the overall meaning otherwise listen to some interviewers they will sometimes explain some songs as well and um, yeah there's another artist um, which was recommended to me through not personally but I would like Okay, maybe give it a listen and I watched the MV and that is from Logic. It's 1800, you know, that number um 1800, yeah. Um that phone number. Um yeah, featuring with Alicia 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 Cara and Khalid. I hope I still was, say those names correctly. And honestly, this music video is really impressive, and I suggest you to watch it. To watch it, it. I was already speaking about queer guys here, like myself. Hi. <laughs> um, but it's it's really meaningful, and I and I actually teared up when I I tear up when I listen to a song. After all. But when you watch the MV, I was just crying. I was crying. Um, yeah. Like I, I'm also crying when I listen and to Elevator or watch actually the MV. And <laughs> yeah, it's just so deep. And I'm sorry, I'm starting to shiver actually a little bit because I'm a little emotional. Yeah. Okay, I think at this point, after all this rambling, it is okay to say that it's okay not to be okay. And despite that being a great motto, <laughs> is this is the title of a Korean drama which also speaks more openly about mental health conditions and not just about depression, which I've been talking more about it here. I mean, because I mean, Depression is something I can personally speak of, but I can't really speak about anxiety that much But I don't because I don't really suffer under it. I have friends who suffer under that and I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry that I sometimes can't really give them the help they need Sometimes which I just try to do with them is like breathing exercises Before they really start to panic but even that is not always helpful. I just try my best. But yeah. Um, but like. In, it's okay to be not okay. Anxiety is a topic. But especially trauma. And I'm not going to lie. The drama touched me very much. 
dra drama depicts very well how you are often times not able to express how you feel. And this is something I wish someone had told me when I was younger. But I'm here to tell you guys, it is okay not to know how to express yourself. It is totally okay. Because the words sometimes just don't come out of you. Um, I have more recommendations <laughs> for this topic. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still a little bit into it. So there's this manga slash light novel slash anime by Ichigo Takano uh, called Orange. Um, and also Blue Springs Ride by Iyo Sakisaka. I just say it's subtle as well as more slice of life and romance orientated. However, especially in Orange, it, the mention of um, depression and such things is quite prominent. Uh, and I think in Blue Spring Ride, I've, I read that a while ago, so I'm not really certain. You might notice um, that one of the protagonists has a really hard time to express himself. And I think this also reflects, again, really good. Um, yeah. But it's okay just not to be, know how to express yourself. Okay, at this point, let me tell you guys, it is okay to be not okay and not to know how to express yourself. And please pay attention to the people around you, listen closely to the songs they send you. Other books they recommend you. Read between the lines, but don't overinterpret into it. Just be aware, okay? Be open. Ask them if they seem like they are traveling, if they want to talk about it. And if they don't, just tell them. If you don't want to talk about it right now, it's okay. But I'll be here for you. And just mean it. It's really powerful. Okay. <laughs> so. And before I end this episode here. I want to draw attention to something really important. Not just my dog. Okay. Um, and excuse me for being rather blunt. But I want to mention the race of racism and hate crimes in our society. Just because we're locked up in our homes does not give you the right to hate and hurt others. Listen up. People of different background are not criminals and especially are not a disease. Be it, be it our wonderful people like with Asian heritage, not heritage, is it heritage? But like Asian backgrounds or people of color or any other ones, they are not criminals and they are especially not a disease. They are just human. They are humans like you and I. Criminals are criminals. And I mean those who spread the hate, the pain and injustice. Because they are really the criminals because yeah, this is something you should not tolerate. You should not tolerate that hate, the pain, the violence they spread. Because it is not okay. Teach your children to be open and respectful to all people. Not just to people who benefit you. Because racism is not something you're born with, but a disease like a theory. Disease like theory, which was once invented and gained too much power. And we should fight that. Not our fellow gentle souls. Okay? Because I I personally don't support racism. And if you do that, I'm sorry, screw you. Screw you, go away. I don't want to have you here. Because this is not correct. Okay. So. I might have gotten a little bit into it, but... Let me sum up our today's episode. Mental health conditions 
queer people <laughs> just be aware be open and honest and pay attention to the people who might feel unwell in any situation and most of all don't be an intolerant racist idiot thank you so thanks for tuning in I hope you still liked the episode, even though it was a rather serious topic. And I hope I see you guys in the next episode. Have a good day and bye-bye.